It was Sam's first view of a battle of men against men, and he did not like it much. He was glad that he could not see the dead face. He wondered what the man's name was, and where he came from, and if he was really evil of heart, or what lies or threats had led him on the long march from his home, and if he would not really rather have stayed there in peace. The Lord of the Rings, an incredibly important piece of media and pretty much the classic of the fantasy genre. J.R.R. Tolkien's world of Middle-earth is an earth-shattering example of world-building in excruciating detail. I was introduced to Tolkien's world not by the books but by the films and immediately fell in love with the lush and impressionistic landscapes, the different facets of characters and the music, which depicted everything so ingrained and effectively. But there was also a great level of realism present in his world. Which is ironic, because Tolkien wanted to create high fantasy. Yet this realism provided a certain seriousness, a certain gravitas to make the consumer care about the events unfolding on a deep level. And although all of these elements are important for crafting a gigantic and complex world, some people critique the work about the lack of morally grey characters. The thesis that Tolkien only uses people with darker skin as the bad guys and people with white skin as these quote-unquote holy figures is also pretty widely considered to be true. With this video I want to prove why said statements are not correct and simultaneously will talk about the importance of my favorite lines from the Lord of the Rings books in relation. I will offer a general context about what is the case. The northern and western parts of Middle-earth are generally very well explored with a great range of different races climates and kingdoms. The same cannot be said about the southern and eastern lands though, as Tolkien simply had not felt the need to describe much about them. The facts that we know are mostly on surface level and oftentimes don't really affect the plot in any meaningful ways. Well, we do know that some of the people who live in said regions join Sauron and the forces of Mordor. Some stayed completely neutral and a few even helped the men of the West. The argument that all people of the South and East essentially are evil comes from the fact that most of the time we see them fighting on the side of Sauron. Before we move on, I would like to remind you that what I say from now on is only one side of the coin, as many Haradrim or Easterlings also fought willingly on Sauron's side. That essentially is where my favorite lines come into play. If we take a closer look we can see that the text is not spoken by any of the characters, but is a thought by the hobbit Sam, as he and his master Frodo 
witness a great battle of Haradrim versus the Ephelian Rangers. Now pretty much all hobbits are very peaceful in nature. So with Sam seeing a brutal battle full of violence and death, it is no surprise that at first he looks away from the dead body, seemingly very shocked and horrified. After all, Sam is pretty much the most innocent of the four hobbits. This feeling, though, quickly develops into something more. A thought. Firstly, he wonders what name the soldier had. We can see that Sam opens up here to the possibilities of thinking about the human behind the armor, behind the mask. After that, Sam wonders about the man's homeland, where he came from. Here we can see an incredibly important character trait of Sam, but I will get to this trait later. The next segment, and if he was really evil of heart, speaks for itself. It obviously wants to clarify to the reader that men and orcs who are working for Sauron oftentimes have their own morals, their own goals, and are not evil by themselves, but were being forced into this position. Yet we have to differentiate between orcs and men, because Tolkien explicitly states multiple times that pretty much all orcs have evil motives because they were created by Sauron. But that is not the case with men. They come from Harad or Run and oftentimes were being oppressed and forced into going to war on the side of Mordor. Anyways, let's get back to the lines. Or what lies or threats had led him on the long march from his home. This text supports the idea of not all men from the south or east being antagonistic sadists even further. And to top it all off, the line, and if he would not really rather have stayed there in peace, is the climax of Sam's thought. These are real men and women, just like us, populating their own lands and only wanting to live a normal life in peace. And these were Sam's thoughts. Thoughts that go very deep and are very philosophical. And here we come to the complex character of Sam and additionally Sam's character arc. He is essentially like a child at the beginning of the journey. He says that he had always dreamed of going on adventures and seeing elves. And as he gets the opportunity to go on a big journey, he brings his childish persona with him. With childishness comes curiosity. In this case, curiosity about the morality of the individual. <laughs> 